I see you run through that lightning. Baby, that got me excited. Been waiting on you to come through. Cause I got some plans for you. I got some chickens that ready. And I got some books too. Cause we gon' level them skills. And rank you up too. DJ Shorts! I pulled you out of an ancient. You literally came out the blue. Sacrifice anything for you. I get rid of the game for you. And you know I gotta get you to 60. And that's why I've been saving blues. Cause I got plans for you. Hit up the Duke King. Might have Mr. Thamb come through. And it might be a late night in Saudi Arabia, but we ain't stopping until the whole day is up. Cause we trying to clap. I need 5k attack. Ooh, 300 crit damage. Ooh, only dress a rotten savage. Ooh, park it with the helm smasher. Got to, she ain't average. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to another episode of Before You Fuse, the show where I look at all the new fusions that are coming in, whether it's one or three, in this case it's going to be three, and I read the skills, give you my thoughts and opinions, and I let you know whether or not I am going to be going for them, or if, you know, you guys should. So, <clears throat> I know that the first one coming up, or I don't know if it's the first one, but I know the one that's... Because there's, there's three that I'm going to talk about. There's High Mother Ma Maud. There's High Mother Maud. Then we have White Queen Akora. And then we also have White King Narciss. And so for High Mother Maud, to my understanding, and I, I don't know too much about what's going on because I've, I've been away for uh, a few days and I've been getting over this sickness. Damn kids at school. Or not school, but uh, I work with kids and they got me sick. Anyway... High Mother Maud is supposedly going to be a fragment exchange fusion. So, to my understanding, it's going to look something along the lines of you. If you have fusions, past fusions, that you just did not complete. For an example, Gwendolyn the Silent, big rip. I really wanted her, but I... Beanie, what's up, man? But I really, I, I really wanted her and couldn't go for her. So now I'm stuck at 75. The issue with this, that... That you have all of these champions here that you just didn't complete, past fusions, they all sit here, uh, except for Quintus. And you, you can't do anything with them. They just sit there, they're unremoved, and if you're a newer player coming into raid, I've noticed that all of these past fusions will show up for you. And so you're sitting here, staring at this portal, wondering what's going on. And for the longest time, many of us were complaining that we gotta do something about this. Because I'm tired of seeing Sc Sc Scabrius at 15 out of 100. I mean, I'm not sitting here the whole time like, oh my god, what are we going to do with it? Anyway, so to my understanding, that's what that's the way it's going to work. In order to get High Mother Maud, you're going to exchange uh, these past fragments. And you're going to open up chests. Let me see if I can find the exact... Um, thing. Hi, babe. Let me see if I can find the exact... Uh, what's it called? Where's the official raid server? There it is. Uh, actually, they announced a lot of things. I know Smiley always got got the sauce. <clears throat> yeah, here. Okay, exchange through fragment exchange feature. Hi, Mother Maud. She can be empowered by using her copies. There's no limit to the number of high Mother Maud fragments you can obtain, and this champion can be fused multiple times. So that's kind of interesting and good news. You can get multiple high Mother Mounds. And from what I've... I, I, we're going to watch a video or two to see what other people are saying, but that's that's what, I'm, what, I, what I read in the news, and that's how I'm understanding it. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the kit here. A1. Blessed Spear has a 50% chance of placing a 50% decreased attack for two turns. And, oh, this books up to 100% or 70% for this one and then 100% for the increased attack on the ally with the highest attack for one turn. Uh, yeah, it's cool, I guess. I mean, decreased attack is useful. It is only on one enemy, though. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's an okay. It's okay. AoE, Anointed Phalanx, has a 100% on a 3-turn cooldown chance to decrease the duration of all enemy buffs 
decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns, then increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn, and then heals all allies by 20% of this max of this champion's max HP. So we're decreasing enemy buffs. Then we're and let's let's stop right there. I actually do like the decrease of all enemy duration buffs because it's it's a lot different than and, and the main reason and I know they changed it. I don't know how they changed it. I haven't been keeping up with it. But for an example, with stone skin, if you tried to place a debuff or tried to remove a stone skin, then you would have a and the and that champion, said champion with stone skin had um, a polymorph blessing on them, you would have a chance, a bigger chance of being sheeped. So when I actually fused the fool, Timit the fool. I was actually pretty excited because Timit the Fool actually has a decreased duration of all enemy buffs by three turns, and it's actually pretty reliable. I can't tell you the amount of times of uh, the amount of times that I've gone into a fight knowing that the champion has a decreased duration or um, knowing that the champion has stone skin on them, like a Mortu or a UDK, and instead of chancing it with somebody like Romantu, or I, mean, I don't use Madame Saris anymore, but I used to, using Madame Saris to try to buff strip. I can use Timit to decrease the duration of the stone skin buff without getting sheeped. And that's reliable because, again, decreased duration of enemy buffs does not proc sheep. So this is kind of handy. Then you're going to increase the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. I don't know if there's still any comps that incorporate you increasing ally buffs by one turn. But I do like this skill because it means, well, obviously you get to keep your, your support skills or pass what do you what do you call it? your your buffs uh, for one turn then you're gonna get an um oh yeah then you're gonna get a 20 percent heal of this champion's max hp i'm assuming you want to build her with hp because it looks like this is a, a hp uh, responsive mechanic so this is pretty good i do like the a2 i think it's 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 doing multiple things and providing quite a bit. I, I would give it like a like an A, like an A plus in terms of if like I had to grade it from a scale from like F to S. Then we have the Psalm of Revival. You guys can see. Can you guys see this? Oh, that's too big. Okay. Then we have the Psalm of Revival, reviving all dead allies with fifty percent HP and turn meter. So an AOE revive. This is on a four turn cooldown. So generally speaking, with revivals, AOE revivals, I I like to see them at three turns and below. But I will settle. I will settle for four for four turns. Hey Rodesh, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping in. It's been a minute. I haven't streamed in a while. Now, if an ally's attack is higher than their defense, if an ally's oh I missed this. If an ally's defense is equal to or higher than their attack. She places an increased defense after she revives. If an ally's attack is higher than their defense, meaning you know somebody like Rotos who has more attack than a defense, then they're going to get an increased attack buff on them for two turns. This is on a four-turn cooldown, and I actually do like this. I think this is a pretty sick revival mechanic where when you come back, not only are you coming back with half health and half of your turn meter, so you get to do your move a lot faster, you also come back with either an increased defense or an increased attack ready to smack. But I'm not a rapper. I like it. It's not like cracked. I don't think it's it's crazy good, but I still think it's a really good skill to have. An AoE revive that does all of these things. Her passive, Shining Evensong, removes one random debuff from all allies at the start of this champion's turn. That's cool. Places a continuous heal on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn at the end of this champion's turn. Huh. Yeah, no, that's actually uh, pretty interesting. Uh, what comes to mind initially would have to be Relentless Set. So, off, off the rip, what I'm thinking here, guys, is Relentless Set, HP, Speed. Those are the priority stats I'm looking at, or the set I'm looking at and the priority stats I'm looking at. I want her to take as many turns as possible. I want her to have a lot of HP, so she's doing a lot of heals. 
Uh, I said speed. I want a lot of turns going in. Relentless set just so I can cycle through these moves because these these moves are. What do we got? We got three turn and we got a four turn cooldown here. It's not crazy long the the latency between one skill and the next but it's still something it's enough for me to be like i think i might need a relentless set and even if you didn't have a to put her in a relentless set uh, you'd still want her to, to cycle through her moves and this is pretty cool here it's like a what's her name um god it's gonna bother me there is an epic a really strong epic night revenant i used to use her all the time because of her past here doom priest i love dp her passive doom priest heals all allies and then removes random one random debuff from them for the entire team at the start of her turn that's very similar to this and then tuana rock actually also does continuous heal on her a1 it's not the same it's not exactly the same as using her passive which, by the way, she does the same thing, where she can remove one or two random debuffs from all allies, like a cracked-out version of Doom Priest. And so, it seems like High Mother Maud is bringing some sort of uh, mini-variations of quite a bit of different champions, which I like. I think it's it's pretty cool. And then increase ally accuracy by 60 points. Now, what do I think about her? I think she's great. I think she's an excellent champion. Do I need her? So, need is relative. I have all of these champions that can do all of these things already. But I'm balls deep in the end game. I would still like to have her, though. I'm still going to exchange my fragments, because why not? What are my fragments doing for me? You know what I mean? They're not doing anything for me, so I might as well. I would have fun using her. She is force affinity. Especially if you're early game to mid game, even late game, progressing. Um, you would want somebody like this to do all of these mechanics, especially if you don't have champions that do these mechanics. She's an excellent carry support champion, I I think so. I would grade her out if I was doing grades, somewhere like an A, maybe S tier, but it, I, you'd have to make like a strong argument for it. I think she's A tier. I would still go for her. I'd be really happy if I if I could get her on like an alt account, for an example. You like her kit like this change with the with using old fragments? Yeah, definitely. So do I recommend you guys going for her? I would say this. If you have fragments sitting around doing nothing, if your summoning portal, guys, is looking a little bit conge congested like this with a bunch of champions that they are not probably, probably not, I can't say for certainty, for sure, but it's more than likely that they're not going to repeat any of these fusions. Guys, I've been playing for five years. They have never redone a fusion that I can recall. These aren't doing anything for you. Might as well exchange this. A lot of us were complaining about this. They finally did something about it. This is what they're doing about it. Can't really complain. You know, this is better than nothing. It's not the ideal situation. And let me, let me point this out. Um, the way to get the fragments... And we're going to watch a video real quick. Someone who knows more better or who knows more and knows better than I. I think because I, I think I watched Chosen's video while we because we had um, a friend over and I couldn't really like record or dive in. So I ended up watching Chosen's video about this, but I have the memory of Goldfish, so I can't remember. And I think that he said you have to chance it. It's not a guaranteed fusion. Like, it's not like, oh, I can give 200 of my fragments that I'm not using anymore and... I get High Mother Mount. It's more along the lines of you get fragments, you exchange it for some sort of currency, and then you can trade it out for a chance to pull chests to get fragments for her. Something like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out somebody's video. Again, am I going to go for her? Probably. Uh, I think she she's pretty cool. And the other thing is this, right? In Centranos, you are sometimes gated and restricted by the champions that you can and can't use. And if I was able to bring her in, she is sacred, she is force, I don't know. They, they, they come up with different things. If I was able to use her, then I'd, I'd probably 
be happy that I went for. All right, let's go ahead and check out Hell Hades this is this video on High Mother Mount real quick. See what the big man himself has to say. Let me know if the volume is okay. Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, yesterday I spoke about this new way of utilizing your fragments, past fragments in, uh, I don't have them on the free to play, but yeah, oh, I do actually. Mm. I've got Zenoga fragments because I'm going to myself here. get this champion. We're going to be able to convert these into new rewards as well as a new hero. And they there just dropped the information on the new hero. So we're going to check it out. I guess firstly, let's have a look at the visual. I mean, yeah. I don't know how she's seeing anything, but <laughs> my mother Maud right here. Let's check out the the kind of spin around as well. Okay, nice. Almost like a yeah. Obviously, a, a sacred. Is it sacred order or banner lord? Actually, I think it's sacred order. Sacred lord, sacred order lord. I, like I forgot the, the faction. Low in in behind. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so we like it. So far, all good. Is the hero any good? And bear in mind, this is probably another one of those longer term okay. projects, right? You're not just trying to pick her up in five minutes because, yeah. you, well, some people might, but you get 10 chests a week, <coughs> even if you've got the fragments already. So what did you say? 10 chests to a week? Into fragments already. So you need the fragments to convert into, even if you've got the fragments already. So you need the fragments to convert into heroes or into chests, sorry. And then within those chests, you could get brews, you could get books. You could get, um, there was all sorts of trash, honestly, but there was <coughs> fragments for this hero. And I'd imagine, but bear in mind, you can only open 10 chests a week. It's probably going to Oh, that's what it done. is. You can only open 10 chests a week. So even if I have all the fragments for her, I can only open 10 a week. So you're time gated, restricted, regardless. Of resources, several weeks, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, it's probably a lower rate to get her fragments than it is to get the the other kind of tr more trashy stuff. I probably. Say, let me just read out what Raid have got to say about it before I go into a kit. So we read this already, so we're gonna skip ahead and let's see if he does any talks about anything else because we just went over the kit. I think I would go over. I want to see what he says, what his opinions are. Honestly, I think it's a good addition, um, and I think. Bearing in mind, everybody over time can get this champion for sure. You know, even the free to players out there, you can't tell me. If you're free to play, all I ever hear you saying is that you didn't manage to get the fragments done. Yeah. I hear it a lot. Yeah. Oh, I only got 40, I only got 50, I only got 60, I only got 70, I got close with 80. This is like for you. This is the exact champion for you because, yeah. okay, we might get some trash chests along the way, but you will definitely get the champion over time. And I don't think it's going to be that long. So, um, yeah, I think this is a good addition. I think it's a good champion. And um, okay. it's a double thumbs up from me. Yeah, okay. there you go. So uh, Big Man himself agrees. And yeah, totally free to play champion. Technically time gated, but still something. All right. Uh, let's see. Here. Put this to the side. And let me hit something in the background real quick. I'm running this. All right. So the next champion that we're going to go over is white queen and cora and i think let me see here in smiley's discord real quick so this starts this is the champion the upcoming launch fragment fusion white queen and cora starting this thursday February 8th. Today is the 5th. Starting in 3 days. Oh, the Queen is the Fusion Champ. And the King will come from Shard. So they're going to have some type of Shard mechanic event to to pair with this. Okay. M. Sandy, what's up? What day am I in the challenge? Um, I think, like, I'm in the third week. Real qu Actually, I can, I can go check real quick. Well, let, me, let me pull it up. That's a good question. While that's going, let me hit this real quick. Let me log into this account, and I'll tell you in a minute, Sandy. I shall tell you in a minute. You're curious to see how they work together? 
So for the baby burrito account, we are on day... About to be day 23. We're about to be on day 23. Let me get out of here real quick. Oops. What about you, Sandy? What day are you in? Okay. All right, guys. White, Queen, and Korra. Fragment Fusion upcoming starting in three days. This is part of a duo. So White Queen and Coral will come from doing the fusion, getting fragments from events, and the king is going to come from some shard event. The fragment champion seems we're okay. Well, hold on. Let me let me before I read that. Let me go ahead and go over the kit so I don't spoil it for myself. I don't want to do that. I'll I'll look at your comment though. A one. Attacks one enemy with a 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally's skill by two turns except the champion. That's pretty cool. Off the bat, I really like de uh, decreasing the cooldown of ally skills. It is only one, and it is random, but we'll take it. If White King Narciss is on the same team and has any active skills on cooldown, decreases the cooldown of one of their skills by two turns. If White King Narciss is on the same team and has no active skills on cooldown, decreases the cooldown of a random ally's skill by two turns, except this champion. If the cooldown on a skill is fully reset, also heals that champion by 10 of the max HP. <coughs> okay. So you're going to start off by having a chance to decrease a random ally's skill cooldown, and then you're going to have another mechanic where if White King is on the same team, either he's going to have his skills put on, or decreased skill cooldowns decreased by two, but if he's already uh, got his skills on cooldown, or not, not on cooldown, another random different from the first one that had a chance to uh, ally on your team, is going to receive that cooldown instead. Okay. That's cool. Kind of convoluted a little bit, but sure. Shield of Emaria. Removes, this is on a three-turn cooldown, removes all debuffs from all allies. So we have a, a full cleanse, and then places a shield on them equal to 25% of the champion's max HP. So... You want to build her with HP. She's going to be placing a shield, three turn cooldown, and a cleanse. If White King Narciss is on the same team, also places a strengthen on all allies for two turns. Then fills the turn meters of all allies by 10%. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. This sounds a lot like... Can you guys guess who this sounds like? This sounds a lot like Mithrala. With a full cleanse, and a shield, and strengthen on all allies. Mithrala is a free-to-play champion. Just putting that out there. Just putting it out there, putting that out there, guys. But, you know, this does bring... Oh, but White King Narciss has to be on the same team, if you even want that strengthen. By the way, strengthen will decrease, uh, decrease the amount of, of damage you receive from a critical hit. So if White King is not there, and I'm going to have to assume that not everybody is going to have both champions, you're only getting a shield and a cleanse. Shield is equal to 25% of this champion's max HP. And then you get the turn meter fill. I don't know if that's with or without Narciss. That's okay. This is an okay ability, I think. Like, I like a full cleanse. I like a shield. But this second half of it is kind of confusing to me, so I don't know. The only issue I have with this is that this doesn't bring anything new. Because Mithral, who's a free-to-play champion that you get from doing Hydra, can do this as well. Remember, this is a fusion champion that they're going to have us pay and struggle for in some form or fashion. Rise, my love. Three-turn cooldown. Revive a dead ally with 50% HP and 75% turn meter. Resets the cooldown of revived allies' skills. That's cool. So you're going to bring somebody back. You're going to reset the cooldowns of the revived of said revived ally skills, but 
You know who this sounds a lot like? Can anybody guess? Before I remember who she is. Godseeker and Eerie. If I'm remembering this correctly. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, is it this one? Hold on. Revive a dead ally with 50% HP. And turn meter. And resets the cooldowns on all their skills. Granted. Granted. The cooldown is a little higher. Is it? Hold on. That's a 3-turn cooldown. What's 7 minus 3? Somebody real quick. 4-turn cooldown. 7. Yeah. That's a 4-turn cooldown. Right? This is this is the same thing, but Godseeker and Eerie seems to have a better one, right? 4-turn cooldown. She's doing a revive. You're getting HP, you're getting turn meter, and you're getting your skills reset. Wait, hold on. Three? Oh, it's two, two, five. Yeah, three turn cooldown versus. Oh, never mind. One turn more, but still. An epic versus a full on fusion who does pretty much the same thing with a one turn difference. It's pretty much the same thing, right? Resets the cooldown. Well, yeah, exactly. But if White King Narciss is revived, he gets 75% HP and 100% turn meter instead. That doesn't mean that he's going to take his turn right away. That just means he's going to have a full turn meter, but other people can go before he can. After revival decreases the turn meters of all enemies, this is, again, you have to have King Narciss for this, because this is this changes things a little bit. Decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 10%. That's pretty cool. 10% is 10%. Just like $20 is $20. Just kidding. If White King Narciss is revived, decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 20 instead. This effect cannot be resisted. Oh, okay. So I'm getting I'm getting they they kind of bang these out together. So they when they crunch it together becomes a little uh, misunderstood on my end. But if there is no King Narciss, you're getting 50% with the revive, 3 turn cooldown, HP, turn meter, skills reset, and then decrease the turn meter of all allies by 10%. But if King is here, if King is here and he's the one that's revived, he gets all this, and then you decrease irresistibly the turn meter of all enemies by 20%. Okay, that's cool. Whenever an enemy tries to place any of these debuffs on the ally with the highest crit damage, this is on a... Okay, you can book this all the way down to make it constant. Uh, whenever... Let's see. With the highest crit damage, transfers those debuffs to this champion instead. So this champion will get whatever debuff instead, as long as the debuff was tried to place was tried to had been played what anyway you guys would get what i'm trying to say fills the turn meter by 50 percent for this champion if this champion misses their turn due to one of these debuffs okay so that's cool so let's say a fear any of these control uh, crowd control debuffs any of these cc debuffs goes on to maud or not maud white queen and cora at the end of her turn she's going to get a 50 percent boost the turn meter if she ends up missing her turn. At the start of the champion's turn, remove any of these debuffs if the champion is on the same if White King Narciss is on the same team. So that's that's cool. Multiple champions on this team, only one will activate. Increase to ally speed by 19%. Honestly, I don't know what I think about it right now. There's a lot going on here. Magic support. And it seems kind of you know what i mean like all right sandy let's see what you had to say the fragment champion seems redundant end game players won't need her it'll be a while before new players have access to her yes 100 percent, and and it's true because decreasing the cooldown of an ally of a random ally skill 
There's other champions that do that. Especially if you have Kaimar. Sure, you don't even need Kaimar. You can do a Renegade. Two Renegades if you really wanted to. This can be done by Mithrala. This can be done by Godseeker and Eerie. This is kind of cool. This champion will receive whatever debuffs instead. Assuming that you, you pair it with somebody who has the highest crit damage. That's very situational. And then for her to, to unlock her full potential, she needs to be paired with White King Narciss. The issue I have with duo couples... Is that oftentimes it takes up a slot for a champion or for like whatever content you're trying to do it takes up a slot so for an example let's let's go ahead and take a look at and i'm not saying that every i'm not saying that every champion is going to be like this for an example cupidus and venus are an awesome combination venus herself brings quite a bit cupidus is like c tier when he's by himself but becomes a solid I'd say a solid A tier when he's got his wife with him. But then there are other other situations. For an example, in the Hard Ice Golem, which by the way, I'm doing Hard 10 now, thanks to Alatreon. But before that, I was doing Stage 1. And the team I was using was this team right here, Cronum and Jamarsa. Jamarsa's... Pre for end gamers, Jamarsa is practically useless. She's an awesome champion for early to probably mid-game progression. Great support, AoE revive, yada, yada, yada. She enables Cronum to do a lot of his things, a lot of his skills, most notably the revive, his passive revive. But in order for, for this to happen, you have to have Jamarsa. But Jamarsa just takes up a slot. Which means if you really wanted to bring somebody else in to provide something else, you're kind of SOL. I'm just being nitpicky at this point. Do I do? Am I gonna go for her? Probably not. If I'm if I'm being hundred percent honest with you, for what she does, which a lot of people already do in this game, for the resources it's going to take for me, nah, <coughs> I'm gonna do my own thing, which is not go for her. Probably, I'm saving up all my shards. And let me move myself here. Like this is this is where I'm at with my shards, and I, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, she's not somebody I would break. I would break my one year plan to save my shards for. If you're a newer player, if you can go for this, go for it. You know, it it might be the case that. Here's what I have to say. I feel like you, whenever there is a chance for, let me come come over here real quick. This is what I have to say about this. If there's ever any chance for you to go for a fusion, it's technically a free champion. Technically, assuming you aren't gated by shards, because most of these fusion events, you have to summon shards or pull something. They usually make it to where you have to. But if you have the resources stacked and you can spare it, yeah, go ahead and go for it. Because any free champion is a relatively great champion. On the other side of that coin, I don't think that you should go for every single event, every single fusion champion that they release, because they do this quite often. There's going to be another fusion. I don't think she's nut level fusion. I don't think she's brogni level fusion. I'd say she's, for me, personally, against somebody who's way deep down in the endgame, I don't think I would even give her, like... She's probably like an A minus or like a B plus. Somewhere somewhere between there. There's just too many things going on that other champions already do. And I don't like that King Narcissus needs to be here in order for a lot of these things to completely be done. Anyway, speaking about King Narcissus, actually let's go ahead and just watch someone else's video about White Queen and Korra. reason why they Here we go. to nerf Taras and Maritska. I started I started watching this video by by Shinny and then I got distracted and forgot. Again, because goldfish memory. Interesting champion news again. 
And finally, Plarium did what they have been. You agree with it? B plus? Yeah, B plus. She's a B plus champion. We're not going to go over the whole kit again. I just want to see what he has to say. Because uh, I often value Shiny's opinions. Thing that they have been trying to do for the past oh, shoot, year. let me move myself. They keep telling us that they can't nerf Ukraine duo. And they have to do it indirectly because of past. And I made a video earlier about Urogrim. And how Plarium said that the community backlash from Urogrim nerf is basically the reason why they refuse to nerf Taras and Maritska. Okay. So he's talking about the... The whole sentiment for most of the community. For those of us that have Taurus, those of us who have Mariska, or those of us who are lucky enough or have the wallets to have both, they're absolutely cracked. <laughs> They've been cracked for the longest time. In fact, Taurus is probably one of my most used and abused champion within uh, champions within Raid Shadow Legends. Absolute fucking monster. I love him. Obviously, I don't want him to get nerfed. But, as time progresses, power creep is a thing. He's going to get pseudo-nerfed. They're going to get pseudo-nerfed at some point. So he's talking about that. Then he starts talking about Eurogrim. For those of you who don't know, Eurogrim, way back then, uh, this is this is a long time ago. I think it was like during, during COVID. They came out with this champion, Eurogrim. He wasn't a fusion. But he was somebody that you could summon. One of the uh, newer, relatively released champions, right? Urogrim was cracked. He was awesome. He had the ability to... This move right here was... I forgot the exact thing. But he could place like four poisons and continuous heals. And you could make him fast. He was basically... An argument could be made that he was even better than, than Battle Kazar. Now, Polarium didn't want having an epic better than one of their legendaries, so they, they, they straight out just nerfed him. And they said, you know, if you spent the gems, the books, the masteries, all of that, if you did all that, sorry, it's going to happen anyway. And the community backlash from that was pretty significant. A lot of people left for it, but this is the thing. Everybody's always leaving raid, but everybody's always coming into raid. So that, that's, what, that's what he's talking about. You can call it a cop-out or you can think it's logical. Either way, so far they are very adamantly refusing to nerf them. But this time they... Here's my thought thoughts on why they won't nerf. On top of them being a cash cow, because people will pull for tar... Are you guys there? Did, did it kind of blip out? Anyway, I still want to pull for Mardishka. The reason they won't is because they released Taurus and Mariska during the start. I, I think. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, either now or in the future if you're watching the replay. When Russia invaded and they went to war with Ukraine, this is when they released Taurus and Mariska. So in some way, shape, or form, which I understand, by the way, Taurus and Mariska are the Ukrainian representative they want them to be cracked. They want them to be freaking coked out to the moon because of what they represent. Ukraine. I agree with it. I like it. Anyway, that's that's my thought as to another reason as to why they are not going to nerf Taras and Mariska directly. They got to find other ways around it. Something that is clearly intended to be counter against the Ukraine duo. We're going okay. to get a fusion champion called White Queen Angora. So I didn't get the this initial sentiment when I was reading her kit in the first place, but we'll we'll see what he has to say. Because I wasn't thinking in the context of a counter to Taurus and Mariska, but we'll we'll see. He's gonna go over and it. Then she's also gonna have a partner, White King Narthus, who is gonna be a void champion and very hard to get. Mm -hmm. But when we get to these champions' kits, you will see that. They clearly I love the music in the back he's playing. Mind, and they are intended to be the indirect counter that they have so many times said to me in CC chat is coming. But okay, let's actually look at the kits. And let's look at Ankara first, because she's the one that is coming from a fusion that you're certainly gonna get, or 
most likely if you're able to finish it. Okay, so here's what I'll do. Because this is a 20 minute video, I don't want I don't want to just straight up watch this. I'm going to oh, I already closed it. Reopen the, the the kit and I'll just take a look real quick and see if I can with new frames, I will see if these champions are actually going to be a counter to Taurus and Rishka. All right, so White Queen. <clears throat> Let's see, decreasing the runners. Uh, if White Queen is on the same team, decreases the blue cooldowns. So this doesn't seem, the A1 doesn't seem like a direct, indirect nerf. Move myself down here of some sort. The A2, shield. I don't really see how this is a counter. Maybe the cleanse. Turn meter decrease, I guess. But the passive actually plays plays a role. Because Taurus, for the most part, when he goes into a fight, if he's going up against somebody who's like in the demon spawn, for there's like three factions, I don't remember. But he will go into the fight and he will place fears on them. So this could be a counter to said fears. But again, if you're going into arena and you have to bring these two in, to try and go against the meta i'd be hard pressed but let's go ahead and take a, a look at the king white king narciss and i'll with this frame in mind i'll uh see if i can see the relationship between this and the ukrainian duo attacks one enemy has a 50 percent chance of randomly increasing the cooldown of one of the target's skills by two turns okay HP based champion Void, just like Taurus. Decreasing the target's skills by two turns cannot be resisted if Encore is on the same team. This is on an A1. That's actually pretty cool. Essentially, you could just keep people locked, keep a champion locked out of their, their skills with just the A1. There's no cool, as long as White Queen is there, then yeah. AoE for the A2, we're on a 3 turn cooldown, ignores 25% of the target's defense. Extra hit under those with a shield or strength and buff. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be decreased. Okay, I see it now. I see it now. Taurus has a passive where he refuses this one. Refuses to take a lot of damage. Poise. All incoming damage from skills is reduced by 50%. When attacked, this champion's max HP... That, that's irrelevant, but this right here. All incoming damage is reduced... From skills is reduced by 50%. So naturally, he's going to be tanky. But White King... On his A2... Will completely ignore that. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be decreased by enemy passive or masteries except by the passive skills of bosses. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be increased by either this champion's mastery, ally passives, or except uh, except when attacking bosses. So yeah, this is a straight up just direct slap in the face to Taurus. If it works as intended. But we'll see. Attacks one enemy. This is the A3. Twice. We're on a 4 turn cooldown. Increases the damage inflicted with this skill by 10% for each buff on the target up to 50%. An additional 10% for each buff on this champion stacks up to 50%. So, if the champion that he's attacking has at least 5 buffs and he uses, in White King Narciss uses his A3, he's going to do an extra 50% damage. And then if he himself has five buffs then it becomes an extra hundred percent four turn cooldown this is definitely something that goes against taurus if this attack kills a target under three or more buffs places block revive yeah so that right there is the counter to taurus and marishka because now even with marishka's passive taurus isn't going to be coming back even if you have somebody like Sippy, Taurus isn't coming back. Unless you have Lydia, who can revive champions through block revives. 
White Queen and Korra does revive. So if you have Lydia in there, this is this is what I would do. I would if I'm going to use the 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 duo, I would also incorporate Lydia into the team somehow. If I was gonna if I was gonna go up against this guy, these guys also grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy when White Queen and Korra is on the same team. That's pretty cool. That's pretty. That's a pretty nice skill to have. Extra turn if it does kill. HP based nuker. Mantle of Undeath is passive. This champion receives. Can you guys see this? Receives 50% less damage when attacked by enemies, including bosses and their minions, outside of their active turn. Meaning, if somebody counters when he has his turn, and for an example, they counterattack, he's going to receive full damage. But outside of that, if it's not his turn, he's going to receive half of that. If White Queen and Korda is on the same team, this champion will no longer receive damage when attacked by enemies outside of their active turn. Does not apply against bosses and minions. Ignores shield and strength and buffs. Wow. Okay. That's pretty insane. This guy is huge. Granted, he is a void. Legendary. But yeah, he's a straight up like so here's here's my thing. The queen isn't that great by herself. She herself in a vacuum probably won't be that great, but she in conjunction with he him would be insane. He himself is pretty pretty dope, I think. Even without her, he's still receiving less damage when outside of his turn for his passive. He also ignores shields and strengthen, increased to 30% HP. You know, it'd be insane if you had the Ukrainian duo and the White King and Queen together. That'd be a pretty interesting team, a toxic team. Skill cooldowns on the A1. There's a still a chance to do that, and there is still his A2, which ignores target's defense. And then there's still this right here where he has an increase to damage and a block revive. So he himself is pretty dope without his queen. Better with the queen, but still. The king is insane. Yeah, exactly. The king is insane. Would I go for the king? <laughs> He's locked behind a summoning event. So I don't, I don't know that I can. Uh, I, because my thing is I'm saving. I, I want to see how many free to play shards I can get. I'm not. I'm not trying to do any summon events. If, if there's a fusion that I need to summon, I, I'm gonna do my best to not use anybody to to do it. <coughs> like I'll have to win tournaments. I, I'm not gonna summon uh, for for one year. I'm not gonna summon. Although if I buy shards, technically that's those those aren't my free to play. So no, no, no we're, we're gonna stick with it. I'm not gonna try to sneak my way around it. Anyway, so this has been a Before You Fuse show where I dive deep down and dip my toes in the water even. Let you guys know about the upcoming fusions, what are my thoughts, my opinions, and let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to be going for the king and the queen? Are you guys going to be going for high mother mouth? Let me know down in the comments below. Peace. And also, uh, thank you for everybody who showed up. By the way, Beanie Senpai and I are about to do a collab if he's not sleeping. We're about to do something together. So if you want, go ahead and follow Beanie. Pop over to his account. In the next 30 minutes or an hour, we're probably going to stream, do something together. Anyway.